Hey everyone and welcome to the channel. Let's go ahead and wrap up the month of January and this was a pretty good reading month for me. I finished a lot of different things, nothing crazy, no five stars, but a lot of really solid reads and I was able to accomplish a goal I set for the year already so I'm glad I got to knock that out in the first month of the year. But my first read of this year and we started out with a big one, a very popular series, a series I have been intimidated by for a very long time and that is Gardens of the Moon by Stephen Erickson, book one of Malaz and Book of the Fallen. This was a book that I I have kind of pushed off for a really long time, partially because I always hear about how difficult of a series this is. And while that's true, while I do think there is a lot going on and you do really have to pay attention to the things that are happening in the series, I don't think it is so above and beyond anything that other fantasy readers have probably read that you you know you'll understand it you will be able to follow along and for the most part i really enjoyed my time i'm very much looking forward to getting to dead house gates i did give gardens of the moon a four star and yeah uh, once again very happy with it really looking forward to the next book and i'm excited to continue with my malazan journey i think it's going to be a really epic series and it actually reminded me a lot of another series i'm reading which we will get to in a little bit next up another four star read but this actually is my book of the month and that is empire of the Vampire by Jay Kristoff. What an interesting book this was. I didn't really know exactly what to expect. I have heard a lot of different things from people online and how people feel about it. Some people really seem to enjoy it. Others, not so much. They think it's kind of cringy and there's a lot of strange things that do happen in this book. But overall, the world building of this book is what really brought it home for me. Uh, I really enjoyed the religious aspects of it. I always find that fascinating when a world has a very distinct religion that really plays into the plot and the themes of the story. And I really think Empire of the Vampire did a fantastic job of doing that. I'm very much looking forward to Empire of the Dam that comes out. I think it's in March or at the end of February, and that will definitely probably be a day one read for me. So I'm very much looking forward to that. Jay Kristoff definitely impressed me here. I don't know if I'll read any of his other works. I've heard more mixed things about, uh, I think it's the Nevernight Chronicles is his other uh, trilogy. But as far as Empire of the Vampire, it was great. I recommend that if you are thinking of reading it and you're still on the fence, go to Goodreads and look at the review Jay Kristoff himself left of this book. It's really less of a review and really just kind of gives you uh, a little bit of his personality and his thoughts on like what you should expect from this book and if you read that and really kind of jive with it I you know I think you will definitely enjoy this I do have some criticisms of it but overall I really enjoyed my time with it really quick fast paced uh, even for a longer book it didn't feel like it dragged all that much maybe a little bit here or there but yeah the world building was really great and uh, I'm very much looking forward to the next book next up we have my science fiction read for the month and that was Tau Zero by Paul Anderson and I ended up giving this a three-star ranking I did a review for it and what it really came down to is I was surprised that this was a very much a human story I was definitely expecting more of a hard sci-fi and while there is definitely some very heavy scientific elements in this book I think it took a backseat to some of the characters and unfortunately it, with the classic trope of sci-fi not having great characters uh, I think Paul Anderson did a pretty decent job of it but uh, it just wasn't enough I think the characters definitely did some very questionable things had some very questionable decisions and just like flipped flopped on certain things uh, overall, uh, it was a decent classic sci-fi, but definitely not a new favorite, unfortunately. Uh, I'm going to continue. I think I want to read another book by him called, what is it, Brainwave, I think it's called. Um, and I also had somebody recommend me his fantasy series, so I might look into that as well, because I did enjoy the actual writing, like his prose was pretty decent, and the fact that he was putting as much character work into characters in this like hard sci-fi book, uh, I was pretty impressed. So uh, I'm hoping maybe some of his other books, I think he himself ranks Brainwave as like a top five book for him. So maybe that's a better place for me to jump to, you know, if it's something he was really impressed with by himself, it's something that, you know, I'm interested in. And he's an author that I think I will probably check out more of his uh, catalog because uh, once again, I was pretty impressed with his uh, actual writing ability. Next up is the book that checked off my goal of reading one nonfiction book this year. It had been, I think three or four years since I had read a nonfiction book and I read The Narrative and Life of Frederick Douglass. I think this is actually a book that I have read maybe in middle school somewhere in that timeline. I know I at least watched a movie of it and I didn't remember it at the time but as I was reading this book it kind of slowly came back to me. This is the first of the three books he wrote and um, I don't know how you rank this. Like I didn't rank it on Goodreads or whatever. I don't have it ranked in my spreadsheet that I normally have because I don't know, it just feels weird to rank a story about somebody's life and especially of somebody who lived the life that Frederick Douglass did. But overall, I highly recommend this book. This is a really great read. It's not very long and it doesn't feel like it was written as long ago as it was. I really think it does a good job of feeling like a much more modern written novel and I was really blown away by that. And obviously it is a harrowing tale. It is not like a fun read. 
but I was also very much engaged with it while I was reading it. I read it in less, like in a day, and it was just really good. I, I definitely kind of want to read uh, the next two books that he wrote. Um, I know they kind of cover some of the same things, but then also elaborate. I think the last book comes out after the Civil War is over. So, you know, this is somebody who escaped slavery and then sees the end uh, and the results of the Civil War. So I'm pretty interested to maybe move along and read some more of those. But yeah, I mean, this was a really fantastic read. If you have not read a lot of uh, nonfiction. I highly recommend this one. It's super good. Like I said, super easy to, to digest and it's free most places. Uh, Audible has it for free. I'm sure most libraries have this. I think you, I even found some copies of like PDFs online that you could read. So you have plenty of options. And yeah, once again, really harrowing tale, but the whole time I was just engaged in like moving forward and it really does just show the the brutality of the time and yeah just all the awful things that were happening but uh you know he really shows like his ability to work through things and, and make a better life for himself so it was you know at the same time as being awful it was very inspirational to to see his struggle and from bondage and his freedom that he ends up getting so once again really highly recommend it i don't know how <laughs> how to rank it. Uh, I, I think I'm just going to go forward with not ranking nonfiction books because it just feels so weird to say like this was a five-star read or it was a three-star and it feels very weird to, to do that. So once again, definitely recommend The Narrative and Life of Frederick Douglass. And the last book I finished this month was The War Host of Vastmark by Janny Wirtz. Now, if you know anything about this series, this is a series that has taken me a very long time to get through individual books. This, I think I started back in like September or November of last year. And it's not even that long of a book. It's like 500 something pages. But I think like Malazan, this is a series that kind of deserves the respect of not like rushing through it and really taking your time digesting it. There is a lot going on. This is the book I was talking about that I feel like it's in the same kind of vein of a Malazan with this on a huge epic scale with a lot of people and a lot of things going on and things you'll miss if you're not paying attention. I mean, there are definitely things that I did not catch at first. And then there's like a reveal later and I was like, when did that happen? And I'd go back and, and find it and realize that I had missed something. But this is definitely the best of the three I have read so far. Uh, this is the third book. And yeah, it is it is my favorite. There are definitely some really beautiful things that are also so tragic. And Jenny Wirtz is proving to be just a master of a character writer. She uh, absolutely has made me feel for all of the characters in this book. And just, yeah, she's just a master at it. Uh, plot wise, maybe not my favorite writer. Uh, I do have some criticisms that I will get to when I do review this book. I, I have some thoughts being this far into the series. Um, I think there is kind of a narrative that you're supposed to be following that I don't think the text itself really supports. And um, I'll get more into that in my review. But overall, you know, if you are willing to really put in the work to read this series, I think you will be super happy with it. It is, the characters are so amazing. You feel for these characters like characters you have known for your whole life their whole life and uh, yeah I mean there's some brutal stuff that happens in here heartbreak just yeah it, it's great and I, I'm glad I'm reading it I don't know when I'll continue with the next one um, probably sooner than later but once again great series great book and this is the best one so far and I have two books that I have not finished yet this month uh, those would be Gunmetal Gods which I think I might be able to finish very early in February probably just a couple of days in I don't have that much longer uh, left in it so far it's been okay uh, I haven't been blown away by it but the um, different mythology that is coming uh, out in this book is kind of a nice change of pace I'm so used to like the very western style of uh, mythology and you know the Norse gods or the Greek gods or all of those kinds of things and to get a different perspective has been really nice and then the other book that I have started but definitely will not be finishing is uh, Return to a Dan by Philip Chase uh, once I finished War Host of Asmark, this was my next physical read and uh, I don't like to read more than one physical book at a time so so I will be starting that. And this will this will probably be uh, at least a two month read. It's a pretty big book. And uh, this is another one that I would like to take my time with. There are definitely some characters in here who I am heavily invested in what is going to happen with them. The last book kind of leaves off in a pretty interesting place. And if you've read it, you know the character I'm thinking of that I really wanna know what is going to happen with that character. Uh, they, something, very much changed for them and I'm very curious on how Philip is going to wrap that up and I've heard uh, of a specific character that plays a bigger part in this book that I'm very very excited to get some more perspective of because uh, they've been a character that I wanted to see more of since like the very first book so to get more of that in here is going to be really great and I've heard most people like this book the best so I think every book so far has gotten better I liked book two better than book one and hoping I like book three even more than book two because that would uh, probably put it in contention for like pushing a top 10 book of the year if I have a similar reading year to last year if it's even better than um, The Prophet of Edan it would be pushing somewhere right in there that top 
15, 10 category. So I do have pretty high hopes for this book. And now I want to give a manga update and I can finally say that I have read some manga. It has been quite a while. I took several months off from reading any at all. I just was not in the mood for it. And uh, part of that was, I think, is because I was caught up on so many series that I just kind of wanted to have a nice backlog to get to. And I did. And unfortunately, I am already caught up again. Uh, so I am currently, I have to check my notes on this one because I don't remember the chapters for all of them. But for My Hero Academia, I'm currently caught up and that is chapter 413. Uh, this series is definitely one that is in the home stretch. I don't think there will be more than, if there's another 50 chapters, I think that's probably close to it. I guess it really depends on how long the like falling action is, but it feels like we are really at the end. I guess anything's possible with a shonen. You could get dragged out for another 200 chapters, but it doesn't really feel like it. It really feels like we are in the end game. And for the most part, I am enjoying it. There was a twist that I had really hoped was going to happen and it didn't. If you want to know my thoughts on that more specifically, let me know down in the comments and I will spoiler talk with you about My Hero Academia. Um, I'm also caught up on Berserk, which I actually have a physical copy of some of these. So Berserk is uh, probably my favorite manga series of all time, one of the best stories I've ever read. And I'm caught up chapter 375. I know with the passing of uh, the original manga artist that um, the chapters are not as consistent and not that they were very consistent for a long time because of his illnesses and everything but uh, you know I think they have a plan moving forward they kind of know exactly what the story is supposed to be we'll see how they handle it and if it holds up to the same quality uh, I think the part in the story that they're at that it could go a lot of different ways I do have some concerns specifically around some certain characters that I won't mention for spoilers but uh, I think there are some characters that need to be handled with uh, pretty extreme care just because of some of the stuff they have gone through and not wanting to put them back into basically the same place they were without any agency. And I think if I say that, you know, anybody who's read the series up until this point knows who I'm talking about. So I I'm cautiously optimistic. I have faith that because they at least know where the story is going to go, that they will be able to finish it appropriately. I am also caught up on Black Clover, and that is chapter 390, or 369. Um, this is a series that I'm pretty much ready for it to be over. Uh, I think it has overstayed its welcome a little bit for me. Uh, it had, it's a series that had some really high highs and I think has just kind of come down the mountain a little bit and has just kind of found its spot in mediocrity. Uh, that's a little harsh because I still enjoy it, but it is definitely a series that I do not want another 50 chapters from. I want like another 15 and for it to be done. Um, it's definitely a kind of fairy tale clone wannabe a little bit mixed with like I don't even know what else off the top of my head, but it is not a series that I am as in love with as I had hoped, especially investing almost 400 chapters into it. Uh, it makes me feel a little bit like Demon Slayer, where I think that series is better uh, in the anime and just a series that as the manga went on, I was just kind of less and less invested with it. Uh, and that's kind of how I feel about Black Clover. Uh, and that might be a controversial take. I don't know how many, how most people feel about the, the manga of Demon Slayer. I know a lot of people love the anime, but uh, the manga itself I think was pretty disappointing, at least to me. Um, let's see, I'm also caught up on Vinland Saga. That is chapter 207. I am waiting for chapter 208, if you know what I mean, uh, us with our pirate ships. And um, Vinland Saga is a series for me that I think was on a pretty steady decline. I was not really enjoying these last couple of arcs or what was going on there, especially after the promise of the first arc. That first arc is some of the best manga I've ever read. And I really think it takes such a left turn uh, and the series changes in a way that I mean, I get what the author is trying to do. I understand all that, but it's just not the series that's promised from the early chapters. And that's unfortunate. But the things that happened in chapter 207 might change my mind. There is big things happening and um, I'm very much invested. I very much want chapter 208 to be translated so that I can see what is going on. And I am also caught up with Boruto, which is chapter six of the blue, um, blue Vortex, I think is what it's called now or something like that. Um, I have a lot of problems with this series as well. Obviously I love Naruto and Shippuden. Uh, that's definitely a like nostalgia series for me that I care a lot about. And Boruto for a long time, I was a big defender of it. And then there was just kind of this big twist that changed everything that I don't like. I think the biggest problem with Boruto is that they started them off as kids and they should have definitely started them off as like teenagers, maybe like young adults. And I think the series could have gone in a completely different direction that would have been significantly better, but uh, I don't have time to rant. I ranted to one of my buddies for like 45 minutes about that. Uh, so I will spare you that. I'm also making my way through Dragon Ball Z. I actually have some Dragon Ball manga in the physical editions. This is actually the, the last one I have, but uh, Dragon Ball Z is where I'm at. I'm like 82 chapters in and I can't remember 
remember if I've read all the way through the series, but I definitely watched it as a kid. Like this is like peak nostalgia and I am absolutely loving Dragon Ball Z. I forgot how great this series was. I am just blown away by how good it is and it really makes me glad that I'm rereading it. I think it absolutely still stands up to some of the modern day series and is better than most of them. So if you have never read Dragon Ball and Dragon Ball Z, I absolutely think you should go ahead and do it. And then One Piece. I'm still on chapter 154 and I think I want to wait. Uh, I normally watch uh, Murphy Napier and Phillips Chase video discussions on the manga they're reading. I have a lot of fun reading manga and following along with their discussions. And they're gonna be doing One Piece here soon uh, with Mike from Mike's book reviews as well. So I think I'm gonna pause and just kind of watch with them. And then when they catch up, uh, start reading it again. We'll see. I'm right before everyone tells me it gets really good with Alabasta or whatever it's called. So maybe I should like, sneak ahead a little bit, but that's kind of my general plans for One Piece. So I don't know how much of an update I will have for that series until they catch up, which I don't know how long it'll take for them to do 150 chapters, but I am very much looking forward to that. And then quickly for some movie, TV, and video game talk, I actually watched a decent amount of TV this month and uh, I watched Buffy the Vampire Slayer. Me and my girlfriend have been watching that. We are finally in the last season. So very interested to see how that wraps up. There are definitely some things that have happened in the last season and a half or so that we neither of us are really big fans of. With a character in particular, we don't really like what they've done with two of them actually. So we'll see how it wraps up. I'm hoping that it at least finishes strongly. I also watched Gen V, which is a boys, the boys spinoff in that same universe. Uh, it definitely is wild. If you like the boys, you're probably gonna like Gen V. If you don't like the boys, you're definitely not gonna like Gen V. It's like the boys, but even a little bit more. So um, yeah, take that if you uh, are thinking of watching it because it is, it's definitely something. Um, it's not the kind of thing I want to watch all the time, but, Every now and again is kind of fun, which is kind of the same thing. I also watched Invincible, which unfortunately is having some issues getting episodes out. Uh, that is another really good series that I enjoy. It's kind of the same. It's, it's similar to The Boys, but maybe not so adult. Uh, it's uh, definitely more of a grown up uh, superhero adaptation, uh, but uh, you know, it's uh, not like The Boys. The Boys kind of goes out there a little bit, but I do very much enjoy that. And I am not done with it just yet, but I, but I am on the last episode of Monarch, the Godzilla show on Apple TV. Uh, I love Godzilla. It's one of my favorite franchises. I love the movies. This show is such a mixed bag. Like the good parts of it are so good. And then the bad parts of it are like, oh my God. I, there are a couple parts where I'm like, we have time for this. And I sped it up. I put it on two times speed because I just couldn't handle what was happening because it was just so boring. So I'm hoping this is a show that can maybe find its footing. I don't know if it's planned for it to have more than one season. Uh, and if it only has one season, it's still a really good season of TV. Like if you're a Godzilla fan, you should definitely watch it. But uh, if it can get a second season, I really think it could be a super, super good show. So I am I have my fingers crossed that if there is a season two, that it is very good because I have, for the most part, enjoyed it. The lows are not enough for me to not watch it. I'm, I'm very excited to see how it ends here in episode eight. And then quickly, this year, one of my goals is to actually play some of the video games that I have bought. I'm sure anybody who games on Steam knows the uh, pain of just buying a bunch of video games and then never playing them. And you just have this massive Steam library full of stuff that you don't play. And so I wanna make sure I actually get through some of the stuff I've bought. So I have already beaten Destroy All Humans Who Reprobed. Uh, that is a nostalgia series for sure. I loved those games as a kid uh, and uh, the remaster is pretty good. It definitely has some uh, performance issues on PC. I don't know if that was a me thing or the game thing, but I saw some other places that the performance, I mean, I have a brand new gaming PC, so um, the performance should have been fine, but it's a, it's fun. It definitely, it the remake is exactly as your brain thinks it is as a kid. So like when you go to play it, it's gonna feel and look exactly like you remember it, even though it is a huge upgrade compared to the original games. And then the other game that I'm playing, trying to make my way through is Red Dead Redemption 2. So if that gives you any indication of how slowly I play games, this is my first time playing it. And um, I'm only, a little, I'm, I just finished chapter one of it. So, you know, still a long way to go, but so far enjoying it, it seems pretty good. You know, I, I like GTA, so this is, Similar, uh, obviously a little different, but GTA with horses are kind of, um, I don't think it'll be too bad. But that is all for me. Let me know what you did in the month of January reading wise. If you wanna to talk to any spoilers down in the comments, just you know, type out spoilers so anybody else knows, but I will be more than happy to talk spoilers with you for pretty much anything I talked about as long as you don't spoil me too far ahead. And um, yeah, but definitely let me know down in the comments and as always, have a good one.